Hello again. Here we go with our third lesson of Unit 3. I'm using a different program to record this time, so this might be better quality, might be worse. Who knows? Very uh, simple lesson today. So we're doing 3.3 uh, quadratic models using vertex form. We know what a quadratic is. It's the math behind a parabola. And we see the word model. What that means is we're going to be creating something that represents a quadratic and we're going to specifically do it in vertex form. So because we're doing it in vertex form, let's do a quick recall of vertex form. The equation is very simple to remember and understand. Last lesson we learned what the different letters mean. In this particular case, we learned that the A value, that's the amplitude of the equation. The idea here is it's going to stretch or flip your parabola. Then we have the h value and the k value. And those two put together create the most important part of the puzzle, the vertex. And if for some reason you need a reminder as to what the vertex is, that's where the parabola turns around and comes back. It's probably the most important part of the parabola right now for us. All right, so we're going to do this lesson all through examples. So we've got this quadratic. For the quadratic, y equals 2x squared minus 4. State the following. So here's a breakdown of what we need to answer. We need to find the vertex. You might be looking at this equation going, well, that's not in vertex form. You're a crazy man. Actually, it is. We just have to pretend like there's brackets around the x, and all of a sudden it's in vertex form. We've got our a value of 2. Our h value is non-existent. The number we use for non-existent is 0. And considering our vertex is hk, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, OK, well, my vertex is at 0. And my k value is negative 4. So there's my other part of the vertex. The axis of symmetry is that pretend line that goes down the middle. And it's where the parabola is reflective left and right, or symmetric. And it's always the x value of the vertex. It's a vertical line, so we're going to always write it as x equals, and then the x value of the vertex. Sir, why do you write it like that? Well, we write it like that because the x doesn't change. It is x equals 0 for this parabola the whole time. Only the y values change. So you can write the equation as saying x is 0 all the time. The direction of opening. We look at our a value for that. This is a positive a value, so this one opens upward. The max or min value, well, because it opens upward, it's going to be a minimum value. And where is it going to be a minimum value? It's going to be a minimum value of negative 4, because that's the lowest value in terms of height this parabola could be. The y-intercept is the trickiest thing to find, but we do know that the y-intercept, if we had a Cartesian plane and I had a parabola going through my y-intercept, you have to ask yourself, what's the value of x at any y-intercept in the world, no matter where I'm crossing it? What is the value of x at any y-intercept? Hopefully you've come to the conclusion that x has to be 0 at any y-intercept in the world. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our equation and we're going to plug in 0. And if you feel like singing the song, you go right ahead. Plug it in, plug it in. We're going to say, OK, well, x has to be 0 at any y-intercept. I'll just use this as a Cartesian plane. We'll just go like that. x has to be 0 if that's my y-intercept. And I'm not saying that is. So 0 squared is 0. 2 times 0, that's really, really easy. And we're left with negative 4. So it just so happens that the y-intercept is the vertex. Now, is there any way that we can check that? Is there any way to, to say, well, does that make sense that the y-intercept is the vertex, is at the vertex spot? Yes. Yes, there is a way for us to check that. There is an equation in a vertex form that we're going to use to check that. The h value is 0. And we know that h 
is what makes it go left and right. And because h is 0, it didn't move left or right. So the vertex didn't go anywhere. The original parabola starts at 0, 0. And if it didn't move left or right, well, then that means the vertex only went up or down. In this case, down. So the new parabola is here, a vertex. It opens up. It's two times taller, etc., etc., etc. OK, so we're going to have to do a second example of this. Why? Because it's important to practice. OK, so example two. Do that again. Do that exact same thing again for this new equation. Take some time. Do it for yourself. Maybe pause this video and do it for yourself. So what's the vertex? Well, the vertex is hk. Don't forget that this is supposed to say x minus h squared. So that means that this has to be a negative 2 and a positive 5. So there's my vertex. The axis of symmetry is always x equals something. In this case, it is negative 2, the x value of the vertex. Direction of opening. Let's take a look at our a value. Sir, there is no a value. Wrong. The a value is negative 1. Mathematicians are just too lazy to write the 1 there when it's a multiplication. So it opens downward. And because it opens downward, you should then know that it's also going to be a maximum point because wherever the vertex is, that's the highest it can be. So this is going to be a maximum. And it's a maximum of whatever the y value of the vertex is, 5. All right, so let's find the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept happens at an x of 0. So I'm going to do the math of plugging in 0. Plug it in, plug it in. You're going to get so sick of that song. All right, so 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. So I've got negative 4 because the negative sticks around for the ride. And negative 4 plus 5 is 1. So the y-intercept is 1. And with all of this information that you have here, you can visualize it and you can sketch it very, very simply. You know where the vertex is. You know where the y-intercept is. You know if it's tall, short, upside down, whatever. All right, so that's all a recall, really. So let's try something new. Let's have some information and generate an equation from it. So this is directly from your textbook, question number 2 on page 280. We're given that the vertex of a quadratic is 4, negative 12. They're specifically hinting to us that we should be doing things in vertex form. Don't forget there's three forms of the parabola. We're not there yet. So they've asked us to write an equation to describe all parabolas. Describe all parabolas with this particular vertex. Well, what the heck do they mean? If you think about it, if my vertex is here, I could have a parabola that's like this. I could have a parabola that's really thin and tall. I could have a parabola that goes upside down very slowly. This is all coming from the same vertex. So what's changing? What's changing to make this taller, thinner, or upside down? The a value. The a value is changing. So what they're basically saying is, you don't know what the a value is. The a value could be anything. So just write an equation. So, well, the general equation is a x minus h squared plus k. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in the 4 and the negative 12 as our h and our k. And we don't know what a is. So we're going to leave a alone. So 4, negative 12. So there's our equation for all parabolas with that particular vertex. Question B changes this up, and they want a parabola with the given vertex. So this is the given vertex right here. Passes through point 13, 15. So it happens to go through the point 13, 15. And as soon as they tell you that, you know that it's not this parabola. It's not this parabola. It's not any of the other parabolas we could have possibly drawn. It is very specifically going to be this parabola. So they want us to determine the value of a for this parabola. In order to determine the value of a, I'm going to need numbers in every other slot. So I'm going to need numbers in y, and I'm going to need a number in x. Well, they gave them to me, x and y. So I'm going to say 15 equals a times 13 minus 4. 
squared minus 12. And you're gonna grab your handy dandy calculator, also known as your brain, and you're gonna try this out. 13 take away four is negative nine. Negative nine squared is 81. Let's just leave that at that for now. We're going to add the 12 on both sides. 15 and 12 is 27. We can say either a times 81 or we can say 81 times a, there's no difference. Divide both sides by 81. When you divide both sides by 81 and simplify the fraction, you get 1 third. So a is 1 third. Perfect. They asked us to find a, we found a. Part C, write the equation of the relation that you just figured out in part B. Okay, so part C, they want us to write out the whole equation. Well, that's kind of simple and easy, easy, easy to do. So we went directly from some facts, not a drawing, and we're able to create the equation. The key to what we're going to be doing in tonight's or, you know, lesson or tomorrow's homework is finding A, calculating a value for A given some information. Question D wants us to state the transformations that must be applied to y equals x squared. What does that mean, state the transformations that must be applied? All they're asking for is for us to describe how is this parabola we just created different from the everyday parabola of y equals x squared. And you can list them in you know quick point form. So let's just you know practice that. It's good to do things in proper order. So let's look inside the bracket here our parabola was moved either right or left, and it's supposed to be a x minus h, so my h is positive four. Well, let's just verify that, that my h is positive four. Well, yes, yes it is, it's right here, that's the vertex, so h is positive four. So I know that my parabola, in comparison to the normal one, is translated or shifted four to the right. Okay, good. I also know something about the height of the parabola. Now it's not been flipped upside down, so we don't have to worry about a reflection over the x-axis. But I can say whether it's taller or shorter. Well, this is saying be one-third your height. We have to think about that. What does one-third mean, grow or shrink? This is going to shrink. So this is a vertical. You can use this, the word shrink if you want but the technical term is compression. This is a vertical compression by, and you can, you can say by one third, or you can say by, th you know, divided by three. I, I really like to use the actual fraction, so saying by one third, because that really lets us know that yes, in fact, it was compressed by that much. And the up and down has changed, or the vertical has changed, we moved down four, so translated. Sorry, I said four, it's 12. Translated 12 downward, or down 12. E says to graph the quadratic equation. So here's my Cartesian plane, and we need to graph our equation, our equation is y equals one third x minus four squared minus 12. So let's use a scale of two. Well, the original parabola is something that you should have memorized. It's at zero, zero, one, one, two, four. 3, 9. These big dots. That's the original parabola. We're going to transform that original parabola. We're going to say move to the right 4, every single one of you. So let's do this. We'll do this one dot at a time. So we're moving the vertex first just because it's natural to do that. So move to the right by four, okay, perfect. I'm not gonna draw the dot there though. 
Now, whatever your original height was, I want you to divide that by three. Well, my original height is zero, so zero divided by three is still zero. I'm not gonna do anything. But then it says to go down 12. Okay, so down 12. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. So that's where my new vertex is. Now let's focus on this dot. Same idea. Move to the right four, two, four. Whatever your original height was, I want you to divide that by one third. So we're going to have to divide four by one third. So get out your calculator, four divided by three, you know, 1.333 or whatever. So we're going to divide four by three and come down to about here, 1.333. But that's not where we're going to draw our dot. We're going to go down 12 from there. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. We're just going to do our best guess here. All right, next dot, well, it's reflective. Nothing's going to change there. So it's going to have moved 4 to the right. It's going to have reduced its height by a third. And it's going to also go down 12. So nice that we don't have to duplicate the work here. You can already see that it's gotten shorter. There used to be two squares between the vertex and the next dot. Now there's only one and a bit. Let's do the last ones here. We're going to move to the right two. So one, or sorry, not two, but two squares because it's four, two, four. We're going to take our original height, which is nine. Don't forget that's a nine. Our original height of 9 divided by 3. Well, that divides really nicely. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. So now your height is 3. I know that it used to be 9, but now it's 3. And now go down 12. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And it's reflective, so we don't have to do any magic. So we can see that our new parabola is shorter. It's to the right, and it's down. Not opening down, but further down here. Let me know in class if you have any questions about this. This is a skill that you need to get pretty good at. All right, we have another example, and this is from a table of values. So sometimes you're not given the vertex, sometimes you're not given all the information. You have to interpret the information. So your answer might be slightly different than that in you know the back of the book, or my answer, or your neighbor's answer. And that's okay, because what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be taking this data and modeling a quadratic with it. So trying to make it look like a quadratic. So the idea here is the amount of gasoline that a car consumes depends on how fast you're driving. So if you're driving 10 kilometers an hour, that's too slow for it to be efficient. And so you're going to waste gas. You're going to use up 9 liters for every 100 kilometers you drive. But there's a sweet spot. And the sweet spot in most cars is from 70 to 80. So we see here that as we speed up, we're using less and less gas per 100 kilometers. But then once you get past that sweet spot, the engine has to work too hard and we, we expend a lot of gas. So what they want us to do is they want us to determine an equation that models the relationship between the speed and the fuel. So the best way to do that is to graph the dots. So you're going to get out a Cartesian plane or a graphing calculator or a graphing website program and graph each individual dot. Now I already have the picture here. So here's my graph. Here's the different dots as we move in speed from 10 kilometers per hour to 120 kilometers per hour. And you're going to guess at where the vertex is. You're going to make an educated guess. There's a couple different ways to do that. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to explain that basically what's happened is we've realized that the curve stopped coming down right about here and started going back up if we wanted to do a curve of best fit. So that line that you're seeing here is not something that you draw perfectly every single time. And your curve of best fit is going to look different than your neighbors. And as a matter of fact, it's going to look different if you used different graphing programs. So that's okay. This is, this is the spot here where your answer becomes different than your neighbors. Could you find the vertex from the table of values? Yes. Yes, you totally could. You could say, well, my values are going down, 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 up. Oh, well, they would down, then up. That's so my vertex is somewhere in here. And so you can decide that it's this one because that's the lowest point, or you can decide that it's 
halfway between, an average between them, whatever. So whoever wrote this particular question in the textbook decided to take an average between 70 and 80, and they got 7, 75. And they used 5.8 as their height because that really looked to be for them what the height of the vertex was. So you're kind of guessing, but it's an, it's an educated guess. And then in order to get the equation, you're going to do what we did in a previous question. You're going to find A. So what we have is we have the vertex. Our vertex, or at least what we think it is, is 75, 5.8. In order to find the A value, you can plug in any other point that is on or extremely close to on your curve. So I, I, you know, don't pick this one, don't pick this one. This one's somewhat valid. This one's very valid. Um, you know, here's another really valid point to use, but I wouldn't use this one or these three. They're they're not on the curve. So for today's, let let's use this point right here. That's point 90 and 6, I believe. Yeah, so 90 and 6.0. It's also really nice that the numbers are you know, whole numbers. So in order to find A, we're going to plug in the Y value of 6, the X value of 90, and do the math. Grab a calculator if you have to. 90 take away 75 is 15. 15 squared is 225. I'm also going to subtract 5.8 on both sides. 6 take away 5.8, 0 0.2. And you're going to divide 0 0.2 by 255. Now, or sorry, 225. So this is where you know a calculator comes into play. You don't want to spend your time doing you know, long division or anything like that. And when you do that, you're going to get a really small number. You're going to get 0 0.0008. As a matter of fact, it, it has a couple other eights after it. It's eight repeated. So 0 0.3 zeros and then eight repeated, or you can say eight point or you know eight nine if you read around. And that's our A value. A tiny little A value. It's 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 really, 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 really small. And so that's why it's really wide. Okay, so I got my A value. Who cares what the A value is? The fact of the matter is you got it. And yes, it's okay if it's a decimal value. I know that sometimes I preach fractions, 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 but good luck dealing with a fraction in this one. That would be ugly. For any of you that are wondering what the fraction would be or how you would get the fraction, I can discuss that. Skip this part if you don't want to learn this part. What we were doing was 0 0.2 divided by 225. So in order to make this a whole number, I just need to move the decimal to the right one. So I'm going to multiply everything by 10. So I'm going to get 2 over 2, 2, 5, 0, which divides by 2. So it'll reduce by dividing by 2. And 2,250 divided by 2 is 1,125. So that would be your fraction. So you could write it like this. And it would be more exact, actually. Not that this process is particularly exact, because it was a curve of best fit. But you get the point. OK. So here's your list of practice questions. As always, I suggest the first question or two. So I'm going to suggest you do question one, and I'm going to suggest you do question 3b before coming to class. I Obviously, feel free to do c and f, but I'll leave that up to you. And if you have any questions, any problems, I'm around, find me. Leave me comments in the comment section of the YouTube video. Positive, negative, either way be polite. And I'll see you in class. Now, I do have one more example. You can totally stop the video here. But I do have one more example I, I'm going to go over. If you think you've got everything and you want to give the questions a try, perfect. Stop the video. Otherwise, keep watching. So we've got another example here. And this situation is that they want us to find the equation of the parabola. They don't tell us how or what kind of equation. Find the equation of the parabola with a vertex of 2, negative 3. Right away, 
If they've given us the vertex, we're doing it in vertex form. And then they tell us that it passes through the point P, which we don't care what letter that is, 7, 4. And we all know that points are made up of x's and y's. So in order to complete the equation, I'm going to plug in the letters that I have. It's all about plugging it in, plug it in, plug it in. So you could plug in everything all at once, or you could start with just the H and the K. Do it step by step. Plug in my four for the Y value. Don't know what A is, seven for the X value. Got a little bit of math to do here. So seven take away two is five, five squared is 25. I'm going to add the three on both sides. You don't have to do that all in one step, by the way. And so seven divided by 25 is my A value. You're gonna get a lot of funky A values like this. That's okay, don't be afraid. So the equation in full is y equals 7 over 25 x minus 2 squared minus 3. So I just wanted to do that extra example in case people are still a little bit, little bit confused on how to find the equation from information. Thanks for watching.